Hello everyone, my name is Aika. I'm a third year trainee clinical psychologist at the University of Oxford. I'm actually two weeks away from qualifying as a clinical psychologist. Over the past three years, I've been running several social media pages and a lot of people have actually asked me how I stay organized, disciplined, questions around stationery that I use. I thought that it'd just be convenient and useful that I show you what keeps me organized in the past three years. This video, as usual with my YouTube videos is going to be quite ambitious. I'm going to be covering four main sections. The first one being stationery I use, what I think is essential, and I'm going to look at nice to haves as well. The next section will be how I stay organized, disciplined. I sent out a poll on my Instagram, The Oxford Psych, around what questions people have. I'm going to give you guys a quick office tour of this space. And then lastly, I'm going to end with a q and I'm going to try to address most of those questions as I go, but the ones that didn't fit into any of these categories, I will answer at the very end. So without further ado, I'm going to start with stationery that I love. Just a caveat, it's not what you have that will make you succeed in terms of organization and academic achievement. It's it's what you do with it, so how you use it. All the things I share, even if it's like essentials, it's not the brand that's essential, it's like how you use it that's going to be the key ingredient to you succeeding. Anyways, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. I'm gonna start with some essentials that I've loved throughout the doctorate. Number one essential that I have on my list is my planner. This is my planner, it's by Appointed. I've tried quite a few planners in the past so I've had pretty average ones from Ryman's. Tried more skin, didn't like it. Tried Papier as well. When I found Appointed and not sponsored obviously it was the perfect diary for me honestly like I don't think I'll ever deviate from this. How it looks like on the inside it's grid lined which I really love and it's light grid so you can kind of see your writing even if you write in pencil. It is dated I do like data planners more because I'm just scared of making a mistake. I would rather not have that paranoia. What I love about it, grid lines, dated, has a side. Each month it starts with a monthly view. I don't really use it, but I could imagine it's quite handy for people who need a monthly view. I just write my own year view. Another thing that I like about this planner is one week is across one page. It's pretty compact. I like Ringbind because I like it flat on the table when I'm writing and I think it's also more sturdy. I've used this for my second year of the doctorate as well as the third so this is my second one and I don't see myself ever changing so definitely worth the money. So sometimes the appointed diary can get a bit intense because the grids are so small for each day because it's one week per page basically. As you can see I've blocked out all the acronyms of people's names just for your viewing but it gets really dense. Some people have asked me whether I use a daily planner. I actually do or did when things got really, really intense on the doctorate. What I use is this Amazon one that I found that's basically a ripoff of Muji. It's pretty simplistic and inside it's just daily planning. There's like time on the side and then like to-do lists. These ones are good because they're undated. So it's basically a fancy to-do list. This is the daily planner that I use when things get a bit much. This is truly going to show how intense number one the doctorate gets, but also how organized you have to be. But when even the daily planner isn't enough because you're so overwhelmed by all the tasks required, that's when it gets a bit overwhelming. None of that helps on a day to day. So to combat overwhelm, I literally just use a plain piece of paper. Nothing beats it. So what I use is create a quadrant and in each section, I write down the different to do's for each category of my life. So as you can see with this one, I put research, placement, creative, and personal. I can see like a full view of things I have to do. This is pretty disposable and I, I can bring it anywhere if I'm just like jotting down like brainstorming ideas of like things I have to do. So those are basically the three tiers of organizations in terms of planner. People have asked me whether I use yearly view. I don't really use yearly view, but I can quickly show you me trying yearly view. I think that they have its utility for motivation and also like in terms of big, big picture, but I don't really think you need to use that on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a 221 yearly view calendar with all the deadlines inside. It's quite clear. You can see when my annual leaves are, my study days, clinical presentations, different kinds of research deadlines, etc. It was handy when things got a lot and you needed like an overall view, but it's also a bit overwhelming because you can see all your deadlines in one year. I feel like this is a natural transition to laptop being the second essential needed for the doctorate as well as undergrad and master's 
etc. I personally have never used a MacBook before because I just don't understand it. I'm a PC girl. I have the Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. It basically aesthetically looks like a Mac without actually like having to get a Mac. It's touchscreen, not that I've ever used it. It's Windows, which is compatible with everything that I need for the doctorate. This is how the Surface Laptop 3 looks like. It's pretty sleek. It's very minimalistic design. It's touchscreen. It's pretty lightweight. I have the 13 inch, I think. Next essential I have are notebooks. Overall, um, notebooks don't really matter. Again, I'm always down the philosophy of like, it's not what you write with or what you have, it's like how you use it. At the same time, you don't want your notebooks to be breaking down on you. Maybe it gives you an insight of how I organize my brain for competing demands. The competing demands being clinical work, research work, maybe your personal stuff, lectures etc for clinical work i have a separate notebook for each placement so each placement i have a brand new notebook that notebook is brain vomit everything clinical notes supervision notes everything just like goes in there it's a bit of a mess but it's enough for me to use normally people have asked me like how i keep it confidential i basically don't write people's first or last names i use acronyms i've basically not been that picky with clinical notebooks they're basically disposable after the placement they should be disposable because they have confidential information in it. Not people's addresses or names, but just personal pieces of information. I basically don't choose anything precious. This looks pretty nice, but actually it's like super cheap on Amazon. I don't know if I can find it, but if I can find it, I'll send you the link. It's basically this brown faux leather back. Again, super sturdy. Inside, what I like about it is it's tiny, tiny, tiny dotted lines. You can be quite creative with the space. The paper quality is really good. And what I like also is that it has a bind like that and a place for a pen, not that I ever use it. I'm not keen on the color, but like it's a placement notebook. And how I categorize research is the three research projects. Now there's nothing fancy about this research notebook. It's the most generic notebook you can find at Ryman's, but it's worked. It really kind of hones down that like, it doesn't matter what you use, it's just how you use it. And this has been equally handy as something that's like fancier like this, or even fancier like Lord terms, which I'll get into later. Page quality is crap. <laughs> nothing enviable about it. The doctorate, you have three research projects. Nothing magical here, as you can see red yellow green tab for three different projects first one being systematic review second one being service improvement project and third one being my theory driven research project as you can see it's super messy you know that tracks everything so that's my research notebook it's fit into one small book which is crazy I did start a lecture notebook, but to be honest with you, with the nature of the doctorate, you sit in a lecture hall from 9am to 5pm with three different lectures, all two to three hours long. There's no way by the end, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, some people are superhuman and they can like write notes throughout, but for me, I can't do that and I quickly learned that I couldn't do it. So I used to have a lecture notebook which I wrote stuff in, but now I just use my laptop. If I feel like the lecture is super important, then I will write notes on my Word doc and then save it in a relevant folder. If it's considered to me less important, then I will literally just like annotate the PowerPoint or save the PowerPoint into the relevant folder. In my head, I've got a mental map of different approaches. So for example, like cognitive behavioral therapy, systemic stuff, or if it's like policy related, and I just create folders. And then within those folders, they'll just be like different topics. So within cognitive behavioral therapy, I might group anxiety into one, depression into one, trauma into one, and then put mini folders into those folders. So that if I see clients and I need like a certain piece of material, I'll just go to the relevant folder. So again, not rocket science, no fancy like Notion app or anything. It's literally just folders on my laptop. Next essential is personal notebooks. I think a personal notebook is really important. Beyond the doctorate, you might have certain interests that you have. So for me, it's existential and humanistic psychology, certain things in philosophy, and also Buddhism. I feel like those are super relevant to my clinical work as well as my personal life and they deserve their own notebooks. I do have smaller notebooks like these that's travel size that I can just pick up and write some notes if I need to. You guys might not be as intensely needing these it's because I also do like creative stuff on the side for the Oxford Psych that I do need to jot down ideas. As you can tell, there's again, no scientific choice around the types of notebooks I've used. I've just picked up whatever is a small size and lightweight. This is literally a watercolor sketchbook, Indigo, if you're interested. And then this one's another watercolor notebook, Roman ones. 
and this one's like a moleskin that someone bought me for my birthday. Basically filled with different notes that I've written over the years like on specific books. Just has like random ideas I have. Next essential within the notebook section is a personal journal. I found that this was really important for me for my own personal development and personal growth and like inner work as people might say it. Not necessarily fully relevant for clinical psychology training or the journey, at least for myself, having a personal space to really write about personal things that aren't just personal development for my professional self was really helpful. Compared to the other diaries, as you can tell, not very precious. I just like choose whatever works. I feel like investing in a good journal is, uh, to me, essential at least because it's symbolic of it being like a special thing for yourself. It has to last the test of time. So it has to be somewhat sturdy. These are the journals that I've used for this past six years. They're the Leuchtturm 1917. Just like the appointed planner, these are the ones that I found that have stood the test of time. I've used it a lot and it still retains its shape and size and quality. For example, this diary is from 2017 and 2018. As you can tell, there's no dents on it, nothing. Definitely worth it. Really like these. Some people have asked me digital notes, certain types of apps I use. I haven't actually used many apps throughout the doctorate. As you can tell, I'm quite a traditional person. I like writing and like tangible things. Things. But during Cambridge, I did use the app OneNote. It's basically a Notion, but a little bit more basic, which I like because Notion gets a bit too confusing for someone who's getting older. And then on my iPad, on Good Notes, it kind of looks like this. I have a lecture slide downloaded here. You can basically annotate, which is super handy. As you can tell, I've like highlighted some stuff, not that I've like looked at it since. You can also do things like this. You can like download papers onto it and then you can highlight them. And you can also write notes. I found it pretty intuitive to use. As much as I'd like to share with you guys this amazing system that I use, to be honest, the doctrine is super chaotic, so I've swapped around. Next essential that I have is my backpack. This backpack has lasted me so long, since 2017, so around six years, and it's only gotten better because now it's like all soft and nice. It's not a fancy backpack. I found it on Amazon, and it has honestly been the best purchase I've made. I've bought other backpacks afterwards, and I always come back to this one. I like that it's canvas and leather tops, so if it rains, it doesn't go straight from the top. I like that it has thick straps because if you guys work in clinical work or part of university, thick strap is so important because things get really heavy. It's really comfortable. Sometimes with these bags, they actually have to make you remove the, the leather strap to like get into your bag, which you know, who has time for that? Um, these ones are just magnetic buckle. Amazing. 10 out of 10. When we go into the bag, one pocket here. Quite a few of you have asked me what my favorite pens are. So I actually have different pens for different functions. And these are the four that I use so much. I've like repurchased them so much. Two of them were like thicker pens and then two of them were thinner pens. This one's the Muji 0.38. If I'm writing something that's a little bit neater, I do like smaller tips. I actually don't like this one as much as the other 0.38, which is the G Tech C4. I like these ones more because the tip is even tippier. I don't know whether that makes any sense. And uh, this one's like less tippy, very scientific. Then I'm gonna go to my thicker pens. These are pens I use when I don't need to be that neat and I just wanna scribble some stuff down. Sometimes it's more satisfying to use thicker pens because they're just like a bit smoother. These two are the, my go-to ones. The first one being the Uniball Eye Micro. It's waterproof and it's quite smooth. And this one's just really satisfying to write with. I've used this since I was in high school. This one's the V5 High Tech Point 0.5. Next, extremely important thing you should have is a backup drive. You might think that you don't need a backup drive. You will only think that you need one when it's too late. Please get yourself a backup drive. You do not want to go into, say, third year and lose all your important information. It's the Toshiba one terabyte backup drive. I've backed up maybe like once in this doctorate, but I would recommend you do it every few months. So do as I say, not as I do. 
backup drive. Next essential, especially in psychology, you write a lot of essays. You might spend a lot of time in the library or in shared spaces. And I do think that this is really important to have. That's a good set of headphones and earphones. Especially for me, I find it quite hard to concentrate when it's like completely silent. I do need some kind of music. If I could, I would have written in my thesis, thank you to music in general, because that is what got me through most of my doctorate. If you want to see any of my music playlists, I have a mellow study vibes playlist that I'll link down below. It's basically a series of lovely, chill piano music, you know, dark academia vibes music that I listen to during the winter time and autumn times. It helps me incubate and like concentrate on my work. So the first one is just like AirPods. Um, I, I don't feel like I need to explain AirPods that much. <laughs> And then these ones, these ones are noise cancelling headphones. I have hyper fixated on multiple Reddit forums to find the perfect headphones. And I do think these are pretty close to perfect. These are the Sony WH-1000XM5. I wish they gave it a better name, but here we are. They're so good. Uh, they're really easy to use, very minimalistic. They have it in black and white. It has noise cancelling mode, it has ambient mode, it has speak to chat function, which means that whenever you say something, the, the music stops and you can hear yourself speak. It's really, really functional. In terms of form, it also looks good. And they have adjustable sides like this. Now is the stationary section number two, the nice to haves. So this is one of the most common questions I have had. Do I choose a laptop or do I choose an iPad or do, do I choose both? Choose a laptop. If you want an iPad, you can have an iPad, but I don't think it necessarily, you know, increases your productivity or knowledge enhancement that much. Then again, I do have one. <laughs> I have the iPad 2020. If you're really into writing digital notes, then an iPad would be perfect, but I don't think any other tablets would be inferior. I don't see why you can't get a non-Apple tablet to write in. Next, in relation to iPads are uh, pens. So if you are a digital note taker or someone who likes to draw things, then yeah, obviously you need a pen. I did have an Apple pen when I first bought the iPad, but I lost it within a week. And then I realized that's way too much money to risk to keep losing 100 quid pen. So I decided that the Apple pencil life wasn't for me. I've used these a lot. If you follow me on the Oxford Psych on Instagram, you can see that all the drawings and writings that I've made on there have been done with mostly this pen, to be honest. This one's because I thought I lost this one. It's the Penovo. I have suggested it to other trainees on the course and pretty much when you go to lectures, everyone's using Penovo because I suggested it once at the start of the doctorate. Penovo is pretty handy. It's like 20 quid. It charges with an Android charger and you can replace the tip as well when it gets a bit rough. Recently, because I thought I lost the Penovo, I was like, oh, why don't I just try another one? I don't actually really like this one. It's not very intuitive. You have to like turn it on like this, but then it turns off by itself. So kind of confusing. Uses a USB-C charger. I like the top because it's grittier since this one's like smooth top. Overall, I would choose Penovo over this one because I don't know what's going on with the, with the tappy thing. Whereas like this one has a button to turn on. It can get a bit annoying as well because halfway through my drawing, it would just turn off by itself because I squeeze too hard. If anyone has any other suggestions around pens that don't have non-intuitive buttons to press, then let me know. The next section around nice to haves is creating a nice office environment. So I actually think this is in between essential and nice to have. To me, it's essential because I really need a nice working space. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys my desk space. For those who have followed me for a while, on the Oxford Psych, this is a pretty familiar scene. So the first is this chair. Didn't put much thought to it. It was really cheap and it looked soft. But one of the arms constantly just like falls like that, so that's not nice. And this one's more sturdy. I will run you through from left to right what's on my desk. So the first thing you can see on this side is a laptop stand. I used to use this before I had a screen. When I still had a screen, I still would put it on the side like this. This screen, I think it's from LG. Um, it's not the best screen. That's why I haven't really recommended it. It's very minimalistic. There's no brands or anything. It's just pure screen, which I like. The next thing I have is this camera. Really high quality. I really like it. I use the camera whenever I'm using the screen. If you're having meet clinical meetings or you're seeing patients, if your camera's there and you're looking there, it gets really confusing. And I have this, which is the Ampro 2. It's very minimalistic. It's very non-offensive mechanical keyboard. The Bluetooth turns on and off at the back. You can customize the buttons. You can customize what the buttons press. Next, I have this laptop stand so I can have a clear space to write notes. 
I have a mouse and a mouse pad. I don't know what these things are called, but basically they connect everything into one. And you can also have your charging spots and also like linking to wireless mouses and wireless keyboards. Everything gets integrated into one thing. It doesn't have any storage. It's just to like connect your laptop to your screen, to your mouse, to your keyboard. Next thing I have is this Marshall speakers. I've had this for three years. It's so sturdy. It's going to last me for like at least the next like five years. I've used it for three already. There's a USB-C cable for charging and it's Bluetooth. It's connected now. Recommend. A whistle stop tour on the insides of my desk. This section has all my gadgets. It's very realistic view of how it looks like on a day to day. Usually when I get bored or procrastinate, I tidy it up. Usually highlighters come here, pens go here, more pencils, wires, charging things. Usually this is where all my research notebooks, clinical notebooks, plain pieces of paper and planner goes. But right now it's pretty empty because I'm ending the doctorate so it's been cleared out. This one's a desk vacuum. So this is just like an artsy corner that keeps me inspired and keeps this whole space cozy. I miss Hong Kong a lot so these posters kind of just remind me of home. But I have some decorations on this side is a shelf with lots of different things. These are all the notebooks that I just showed you with all my random notes. Usually my journals on, are here. Vitamins, clinical books. I don't know what that pal is. A printer which I find has been useful but this one's a ripoff so I'm not going to introduce it. The next section is on how to stay organized, disciplined, motivated. I've got a lot of questions on this section. A lot of the questions kind of touched on similar things around work-life balance and how do I keep a work-life balance with so many computer demands. I've just jotted down a few things that I felt helped me through the doctorate. If you want specific study tips on how to do well academically in an academic course like a bachelor's or like a PhD, I think my other video on how to get a first is more appropriate. I found that there's been a few essential principles that I hold that has been really helpful for me. The first one is you can do anything but not everything. That quote essentializes what I feel about the overwhelming demands. In a day you can pretty much do anything with your time but you can't do everything. There's so many demands that you have to choose something. I feel like that quote is quite grounding because whenever I'm like oh my gosh I've got so much to do ultimately I just have the age nine hours I have throughout the day so I'm like okay let's like choose something realistic that can be done today. Another analogy that I really like is your time or your space or your energy being a big jar for you to fit everything into this jar you have to put the big stones in first and then you put the pebbles in. If you put do it the other way around you put the small pebbles and the sand and whatnot in first you wouldn't be able to fit the big stones. So that's how I basically run my day. I'm like, okay, what is essential to be done today? I put the big stones in first. So for example, on a research day, I might have like a big task that I want to do, which is say, do my thematic analysis. That would be my big stone. And then the small pebbles would be everything around that. So replying to emails, writing some notes, meetings, things like that, or like small pebbles that I fit in between the big project that I have. I would time block when I'm the most energized to do the big thing. And then when it's like a little bit more brainless work, like I put them in the time when I have less energy. So I have like a long to-do list that's like at the end and I just like smash through them. I read a book that had a study where it shows that in order to uh, switch attention between tasks, it takes around 20 minutes to fully attention switch. So you don't want to go from a big task to then like a small chore and then back again, unless that works for you. It doesn't work for me. It's better for you to have like a flow zone, deep work, big block and then you do all the less cognitively taxing tasks all together at once. Next principle I follow is discipline equals to freedom. A lot of people think that discipline and freedom are two different things. You're either disciplined or you're free. I actually think that if you're super disciplined with your time, that's how you end up with lots of freedom. So people who aren't disciplined end up not being free because if you don't run your life, your life will run you. So people will start asking you for demands. If you party too hard or don't work in the time that you should have, then you have to extend your deadlines Then you end up being less free overall. So my principle is always discipline creates the freedom that I want. Creating a distraction free zone to be super disciplined and get your work done in that time and then I have loads of time to play. That's how I've pretty much over the three years retained my weekends. Obviously there has been exceptions but most of the times it doesn't leak into the weekend and my main motivation to be disciplined during the weekdays is my freedom in the weekend. 
In terms of how to deal with overwhelm of the amount of competing tasks on the doctorate, quadrant planning has actually really helped me. Whenever I feel overwhelmed and there's too many things in my brain, I like to externalize it onto a piece of paper so I can see everything and then prioritize by starring things that are essential to do that are like time limited within the week. On the days that I feel really tired, I made peace of the fact that there will be days that I don't want to do anything or I don't have the energy to do anything. So I would just do the things that are less cognitively taxing or go slower. Small all steps ahead are really important no matter how small as long as you're going slightly forward creating that momentum then i think that's like the most important bit because usually when you start small you might not notice but you might end up doing the thing that you didn't want to do anyway so it's about the activation energy to do that small thing first and then hopefully energy will pick up but if your energy doesn't pick up and it's still tiring then that's your body signaling to you that you need to rest. What I've learned throughout the doctorate is to respect those times where you really need to rest. If you actually rest at those times, you'll actually be more energetic overall. Whereas if you boom and bust and like force yourself when you're clearly super tired, you just won't get any work done anyways, or it'll be really low quality work that you have to redo. Next principle is based on Maslow's hierarchy. I do truly believe that you can't do anything that's extremely cognitively taxing if you don't have your principles down. Eating nutritious food, socializing, sleep properly but if you get the core physical stuff down then that gives you the environment the garden to grow your flowers into you can't grow your flowers in a environment where the soil is not fertile and you don't have water and you don't have sun so you have to get the essentials down first and for me that's like my physical needs this section is a question and answer section so these are questions that i got from instagram that i wasn't able to fit into the rest of the video first one is around note taking so not necessarily what notebooks i have which i already covered but like how to take notes as i alluded to in the notebook section my note taking is not necessarily that systematic the process of me taking and organizing notes as you can tell it's organized via the demands i have so clinical research and then my personal stuff but then these sections, as you can tell with my research stuff, I've just basically tabbed the three different projects and recorded as I go. With my patient stuff, I change notebooks every six months. High case load placements, I use a folder to remember all the patients in different pages. The supervision notes, I put it into the placement notebook, but on the back page. I don't use any templates or anything. The way I think is pretty idiosyncratic. <laughs> I basically just use a plain notebook to keep the notes. And in terms of archiving, I only archive important resources, which usually fall into the office laptop. And then at the end of placement, I pull out the resources that I found that are non-confidential. So like different workbooks, PDF files, sleeping diaries or mood diaries, etc. I pull them out and then I put it into my like normal laptop folder so that if I ever need it for another placement, I can just like whip it out. A lot of people actually were interested in what I regret buying. The first one is a standing desk. The second one I've already talked about, which is my iPad. I actually didn't use it at all for the clinical doctorate. I used it for my extra projects on the side. Next thing I regret buying is my screen. I basically should have bought a more expensive screen because actually that screen made my head even more dizzy. It was just too pixelated. If you do want a screen and you do use screens a lot to invest in a good one, because overall by the end of the year, I really wasn't using my screen that much because it just gave me a headache. Next thing I regret buying is the printer that I have. What I've learned is that actually printing comp these make printers really cheap but then make the ink really expensive and I really regret getting this printer because they immediately detect you using up ink and they don't let you use any kind of like fake inks from like other companies plus also even if I print black and white red and yellow goes as well so I think like the whole printing situation is just in general a scam but if you have any recommendations do put it down below within maybe six months I use more money on the ink than the actual printer itself the last one I've also talked about which is my apple pencil I've lost it I've never used it on the doctorate because I lost it before I actually got onto the doctorate which was an absolute heartbreak for me <laughs> alternatives that aren't stamped with the apple brand did the job last question i got is how i manage meals to be honest i cook really simply throughout the doctorate i don't do anything fancy i'm not really much of a chef so i basically bulk cook things for like a few days 
like pasta or like fried rice or something. I have to admit, most clinical days, I buy really cheap like pots of soup and I'm happy with that. I don't think I necessarily have honed down that skill yet. I'm coming to the end of the doctorate, so it's really nice to just wrap up what's been helpful and hopefully this has distilled some of the information that might be helpful for you if you're starting training or thinking of starting training. You get to see someone who has pretty much completed everything on the doctorate my tips around organization and the things that i've used i really enjoyed filming this thank you for watching if you've gotten to the end feel free to say hi put any questions you have about any kind of psychology question or specifically clinical psychology questions down below i will try to reply to them wherever you are in your journey i hope that this video has been helpful to you inspiring in any way or insightful in any way and if you have any recommendations around what I can further support with, please let me know in the comments section down below. Hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye.